something to say. Hello everybody, how are y'all doing? My name's Charlie, you might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset. Really high on the fantasy right now, doing a lot more fantasy than I am the sci-fi. But today we're going to be talking about sci-fi. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I debated for a really long time whether or not I was going to do this episode because it is a cynical hype call from the people at Disney, and I know that. And you know that. But here we are, and we're going to be talking about it anyway, because it's what we do, isn't it? Okay, so if you're not paying attention to the world of Star Wars, John Favreau, in concert with the people at Disney and Star Wars and all that stuff, Lucasfilm and the like, have given us our first sneak peek at the upcoming live-action series, the Mandalorian. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. Well, they didn't. Not really. And I almost think that the lack of information is almost more of a story than the information that they released. Okay. So, John Favreau shared on his Instagram account, because that's how we find out things about major series and whatnot now. Okay. Um, basically a title card that said... The Mandalorian. After the stories of Jango and Boba Fett, another warrior emerges in the Star Wars universe. The Mandalorian is set after the fall of the Empire and before the emergence of the First Order. We will follow the travails of a lone gunfighter in, his, uh, in the outer reaches of the galaxy, far from the authority of the New Republic. Ooh. And, and that tells us really nothing. It really doesn't. It, it it sounds and almost feels like more of a reveal than it actually is. And frankly, I, I'm a little surprised that they gave us the little drips that they did. So, what do we know? We, we know it's uh, about a Mandalorian. Okay. <clears throat> it, it lets me know that this is probably going to be a bounty hunter story. Either tangentially or in fact... Because, you know, we, we have the uh, mention of Jango and Boba Fett. I, I, I am excited that this is definitely not a Boba Fett story. I, I would not be surprised if we end up finding out that this is Boba Fett's son. Oh yeah, that's the other thing that we found out. Because people started going crazy over who this Mandalorian might be. Because, you know, we, we always like continuity in our continuity. And so a lot of people, including my husband, immediately jumped to, oh, it's Sabine Wren. We're going to get Sabine Wren's story in a live action series. Because, well, we know that she basically goes to find Ezra after the fall of the Empire. So that's what it's going to be. This is so exciting. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And I started hearing this from other people that they were so excited. We were finally going to get Sabine Wren's story. We're going to get Sabine Wren's story. And it's going to be live action. And isn't that going to be awesome? And so they immediately released a still showing us that the Mandalorian is a dude. Again, not telling us anything about who he is or what he's going to be doing or anything. Just, look, he's definitely a dude. Do you not see that he's a dude? Look at the picture. He's a dude. He's wearing Mandalorian armor that's not colored the way Django or Boba's was. Had not colored the way Sabine's was. It's a dude. And yeah. So way to quash rumors by pretending to give us more information. And, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Like it's, it's a brilliant way to make it look like you're opening up more and you're sharing more and giving more information while you're actually not giving us anything. Like did anyone seriously think they were going to do a series called The Mandalorian and we weren't going to see them in the iconic Mandalorian armor? At any point? I mean, really? And that would be ridiculous. I mean, that would be beyond ridiculous. So they didn't tell us anything, except for it, it's very obvious from the picture that it's a dude. Like, they went out of their way in the staging of this picture 
or the cho- choice of the still to let us know this is a dude. Just so we would stop talking about Sab- Sabine Wren. But okay, I'm alright with that. Hopefully they they have a decent story. I don't know. We still don't know. So they're going to tell us more. Okay, yay. Oh, they've got directors lined up. Ooh, this this seems interesting. Ooh, so the executive producers are John Favreau. Well, he's writing the series and, you know, technically the showrunner for it. So that makes sense. And he's actually played a Mandalorian before. I don't know if you remember or not, but back in the days of the Clone Wars, he was the voice of Priz Vizsla. So that's awesome. But okay, Kathleen Kennedy is one of the executive producers, which is the most, well, uh, duh, that, that's Kathleen Kennedy's job. Okay. Colin Wilson. Okay. That's, that's another. Dave Filoni. Well, try to get me excited. Dave Filoni. Dave Filoni is exec producing two of these things now. It's cool to see Dave coming up in the company because he's doing, he's exec producing this. And I believe he's got an executive producer credit on the resistance. I know he's got a creator credit on it. Because he came up with the idea. Other people are doing the series, but he pitched the idea for it. And that's awesome, because Dave Filoni has been doing a lot of really great Star Wars stuff. I mean, he's responsible for a lot of the Clone Wars and, well, Rebels. And Rebels turned out to be phenomenal in a way that I don't think any of us expected when we first started watching it. So, okay, that's awesome. But again, it doesn't tell me anything. It's just trying to get me hype because Dave Filoni's name's there. And yeah, that gets me a little bit more excited because it's hard for me to think of Star Wars without Dave Filoni just because he's been doing the series for a very long time now. And so I'm, you know, he he is almost as synonymous with Star Wars in my head as George Lucas was because, well, he's the guy that worked with George Lucas to make the Clone Wars. He's the guy, guy who did Rebels. <clears throat> okay. Oh, and they have a whole bunch of directors lined up. Deborah Chow, who did episodes of Jessica Jones and Mr. Robot. Okay, that's that's kind of nifty. I'm going to start destroying names now. I apologize to all of these people in advance. Remember, as many have said about themselves, pronouncing names wrong is kind of my thing. Rick Funiyiwa, who apparently directed episodes of Dope and Confirmation. If that's the movie Dope, then... That was really good. I really liked that movie. And it was kind of funny. So that's an interesting thing. But again, it doesn't tell me anything. Bryce Dallas Howard, who was a co-star on Jurassic World. Okay, well, that's a thing. Ooh, I'm going to mispronounce his name because I always mispronounce his name and I'm so, so sorry. Um, Teiko Atiti, I believe that was name is pronounced. Dude, Thor Ragnarok was amazing. I'm very excited about that. Ooh, Dave Filoni is going to be directing an episode. Ooh, well, that does get me a little bit excited. Yeah, he's going to direct the first episode. So at least the first episode is going to be good. And it's going to be coming to the Disney streaming service. And so now I'm definitely going to have to sign up for the Disney streaming service because, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to sign up for the Disney streaming service. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm kind of that dope that, you know, I signed up for, uh, DC Universe, which I mean, it's fine. I mean, I'm glad to be able to watch through Batman the Animated Series and some of the other stuff. I'm actually enjoying reading through the comics. That that it, it I'm currently reading through the New Teen Titans, and wow, Beast Boy. I, I didn't read the New Teen Titans when I was a kid, so this is all new to me because I, I really didn't care about any of the characters that were in it. It didn't interest me. Like, I loved Batman, but, like, Robin and the rest, like, I didn't care about. So, like, I wasn't reading those things when I was younger. Oh my goodness, Beast Boy is terrible. (laughs) I mean, terrible, but we'll we'll do that later. Oh, man. But yeah, I'm really excited to be reading that. I'm reading through some of the Batwoman stuff that I haven't been able to read before. And, you know, it's more than I want to spend, but it's not quite my Marvel Unlimited. But, okay... I get to read comics, so, you know, I I pay for my Marvel Unlimited so I can read my comics there, and I'm paying for DC Universe so I can read some comics there and occasionally watch some stuff. My husband got to rewatch Constantine, so that's a plus, because he really wanted to do that. I'm curious about the Titans, but, you know, I I pay for these things. I, I, I paid for CBS 
whatever they're calling themselves, All Access, I think, and just to watch Star Trek Discovery, and it was good, and I'm probably going to turn my subscription on again to watch season two of that, and I subscribed to Stars for American Gods, and when it was over, I canceled, and I'll probably resubscribe for that, Yeah, but you're not telling me anything, and this, to me, is the really insidious and stupid, almost super villainous part of this whole thing, because remember... We're not going to see The Mandalorian till sometime next year. We don't know when, because we don't know when the DC streaming app is going to come into it. I'm sorry, the DC. The Disney. Wow, I never realized how close those are in sound until I just did that malaprop there. Okay, anyway. And we're not going to see the Disney streaming app until sometime next year. So, okay. Yeah, Disney will release its streaming app when they're ready. And I was probably going to subscribe to it anyway, because I like a lot of old school Disney stuff. And I'm kind of hoping that it'll have like a lot of the Disney stuff that I grew up on, because I think that that would be fun to have on the background when I'm writing or, you know, outlining stuff like, dude, like classic DuckTales and Rescue Rangers and Darkwing Duck. That would be amazing. I don't know if those are going to be there or not, but I would love it if they were. That would be awesome. So they were going to get my money anyway. But this is one of the most cynical ploys I've seen Disney do in a while. They they gave us an action figure. Quite literally. They gave us an action figure. Here is your nameless Mandalorian action figure. Who's wearing... I mean, I don't want to be insulting because it's not that it looks bad, but it's generic Mandalorian armor. I mean, it's like olive green and brown and various earth tones and... He obviously has a rifle, maybe a carbine on his back. He has a gun on his belt. Actually, I think he has two. I think he has a carbine on one hip and a pistol on the other, maybe. He has a bandolier. Interestingly enough, he doesn't have the iconic antenna from the Boba Fett armor. The Boba Fett Jango Fett armor. I, I don't care. It's Mandalorian. It looks cool. Mandalorian armors always looked cool. I remember grinding forever in Star Wars Galaxies trying to get me a set of Mandalorian armor, and I never found all the pieces, because they made it really, really hard. But that's because Mandalorian armor looks cool. (laughs) It's always looked cool. I mean, think about it. The entire obsession with Boba Fett is because he looks cool, because he really doesn't do anything in the movies. But my generation went crazy because he looks cool, and he has that machine-processed voice that's very flat and monotone. And no disintegrations this time, because he's apparently a monster who disintegrates people. And so they give us an action figure that was Boba Fett, and we played with him and created these elaborate ideas with him. And the Star Wars Extended Universe gave us professionally written fan fiction about him that had to change over the years. My personal favorite was when Django Fett, when Boba Fett was revealed to be a woman for a brief period of time in Legends. Which, yeah, that happened. Gender-bent Boba Fett goes way back. And then, of course, you find out that that really wasn't him, and da 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 But yeah. And, of course, the Mandalorians have changed a lot over time, and I'm really curious to see where they go with this. But they gave us an action figure. Look, remember having fun playing with that faceless Mandalorian doll you had when you were a kid? And imagining all the crazy things that he got up to? You can do it again. And please talk about it online like I'm doing right now because I'm a mindless drone of the Disney Corporation who goes, hey, look, Star Wars shiny. And I talk about it because of course I do. Because this is what they want. And I feel like this is so cynical because we don't know anything about it. There's nothing to talk about. If you actually go back and re-listen to the episode up until this point, I've actually talked very little about the new show itself, and a lot about side projects and other things, and yeah, I haven't really gone into detail about this show, because there are no details for the show. And yeah, there are things that I would like for it to do, like my personal dream hope is that they're somehow going to find a way to give us um, Crimson Empire. And the fact that it's called The Mandalorian really doesn't tell me that that's not going to happen. But it probably not this. I want Crimson Empire brought back into canon. I really do. It was awesome. But yeah, I don't know. But there I go. I'm off speculating because they gave me an action figure. And this is the state of 
both journalism and fandom today. When I was going to grab pic copies of the pictures so I could look at them while talking to you all about this particular new thing, there are so many articles that are crazy long that have nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing of information here. Like, there's none. They don't, they, they don't, and nothing more than what I just told you, nothing. But everybody had to write an article about it. For goodness sakes, I'm doing a podcast about it, and this is the brilliance of hype. But I don't even think that this is hype. I think this is, this is the power that George Lucas built into Star Wars, that it is our new mythology. One of the heroes of old is emerging from the cloud. We are starting to see that maybe we will be able to glean some understanding. And so we all start looking at how the birds are flying and how the smoke rises from the altar. And we all begin chanting our chants and looking using our augury as best as we can to tease out the meaning from the cloud. What are the gods trying to tell us about the Mandalore? Because, of course, the fact that he is a Mandalorian has to matter. Or why would they name the show The Mandalore? They would have given it a different name, but they didn't. So maybe he's a member of Death Watch, or a fugitive from them. Maybe... Just maybe, and this is my personal favorite because it's the one that I immediately leap, leapt to after this, that so many people became obsessed with the idea that Rey was the grandchild of Obi-Wan and Duchess Satine. And, of course, we got the reveal in The Last Jedi about that. Um, that they're actually going to run with that here, and our Mandalorian is going to be the lost child of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Duchess Satine, and that's going to be teased out throughout the story. And that's why he is the Mandalorian, because he's the Mandalore. He is the one who rightfully should sit on the throne. His mother was the Duchess Satine of Mandalore. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that they're going to do that. I think that would be hilarious if they did that. That would be a much more DC Comics Warner Brothers way to do things than a... Uh, Disney way of doing things, but I just want to put that out there. That was my initial thought, that this is how they just get rid of those rumors. Okay, fine, Satine, Satine and Obi-Wan did have a kid, and it's the show over here. Now shut up. We're doing other things in the movies. But considering we may not get to see this series before episode 9, I, I, don't, think that, I don't think that they're going to do that. But I can think about it because I got my action figure, and you can think about it too. Because we have an action figure now. It's generic Mandalorian number five. And I say that because the armor and the coloring of it really kind of looks like the background Mandalorians from Rebels. Like, it's not overly distinctive. I mean, I'm not going to say it's not distinctive, but, you know, there's nothing. I, like, I don't see any clan marks. I see some triangles and stuff on the armor that may have some of that. But... Like, there's the, the, the design on the chest plate is uh, kind of washed out in the lighting, so you can't really tell. And the same with uh, the mark on the gauntlet. So, yeah, I don't know. It looks like he's walking through a Tatooine street, which I don't think is an accident. I doubt that he's actually on Tatooine, but, oh, wouldn't that be something? We actually go back to Tatooine for this. But there I am, my practicing my augury skills. What does the liver of this bird tell us about our fate? Let us throw wax into the water and see what shapes it takes, so that we might read the portents of the gods. Yeah. I, I find this intriguing on several levels. One, that they were able to give us so little, and yet so much discussion has come up. That says a lot both about us and about how they were able to ingrain this world into our minds. And so as a writer, it makes me really want to know how to do that so I can get people excited about my own stories in a similar fashion. But then there's the cynical side of me that's like, I am all hype and excited because they've they've put out a blank slate. It's a dude in Mandalorian armor. They've told us that he's a dude who's a Mandalorian. <laughs> they did tell us the time. And I'm really glad it's not happening during the Empire I'm assuming when it says after the fall of the Empire that they're actually... 
I, this is my assumptions here, that they're being very specific and that's not the Battle of Endor, but after the final Battle of Jakku, which you can read about in the Aftermath books and see my favorite character, Sinjir, because he only exists in the books and probably will only ever exist in the book. Though I would love to find a way for him to exist in this show. Because <laughs> time, time period's right. Maybe he hires the Mandalorian to uh, assassinate somebody on behalf of Mon Mothma because... Mon Mothma's shady. <laughs> and again, if you don't understand that, re read the Aftermath books. We'll talk. And they're really good. And a lot of people are uh, have weird feelings about them. I, I personally really enjoyed them. Snap Wexley and all them. But, oh, Sinjir. 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 And they actually have in them a Mandalorian. Kinda. Ish. I just read the books. I don't know. I, I, I really, I'm fascinated by this whole thing. I am enthralled by this whole thing, especially in how much it has enthralled me and others. But it really isn't much. There's not a lot. So why are we so excited? Well, I, I shouldn't. I really shouldn't. That, that That's rude of me. Why am I so excited? Why was my husband so excited about this? Why is other people, why, why are other people that I know so excited about this stupid set of images that they've given us to tell us nothing about the future story and what will eventually be happening in a galaxy far, far away. Because it's Star Wars and they gave us a new toy and we're going to get a Mandalorian that we're going to be able to follow around like Sabine Wren. And we loved Sabine Wren because Sabine Wren was better than Boba Fett ever was and ever will be because Boba Fett was cool because we didn't know anything about him and we're able to just run wild in our mind with the action figure and be all excited. And so... Yeah, they've given us a little bit more about Boba Fett, but who really cares about Boba Fett? Because we ha we got Sabine, and Sabine was really cool and got to show us a lot more about the Mandalorians and Mandalorian society and everything going on with that. And she was cool because we actually knew her. And so we're going to get a new Boba Fett, but it's going to be a Boba Fett that's like Sabine Wren. Like, not like like Sabine Wren, but like enough to Sabine Wren because we're going to get to actually know him and see what he's like and... He's going to be more than just the action figure that I get to be excited about eventually. But for right now, I can go back to being a little kid who's excited because I've got my new Boba Fett action figure who, oh dear God, please don't let him be a Fett. I don't want that to be a thing. Like the only thing that I do not want to be a thing is I do not want him to be a Fett. I, I don't want to find out that this is like Nana Fett or whatever. And Django, eh, Boba... I don't know what follows that in the name in the line of succession of names, but you know, I, I don't want him to be a fat. But here we are. I'm excited. I shouldn't be, but I am. Eh. What about you? How do you feel about here? Look, it's two teaser images that tell you absolutely nothing. Fall in love and talk forever about our new series that's going to be coming in a year or so. Thing. <laughs> like I said, if if you have any theories, definitely contact me. But if you have any theories as to why we get so excited over what is really not a revelation, I'd love to hear those too. I think that would be fascinating. So if you want to contact me, the easiest and best way to do that is to download the Anchor app at anchor.fm and follow me, Project Shadow, on the Anchor app. You can listen to the full episodes of the podcast there. But there's a little call-in button. You click that and you can leave me up to a one-minute message that as long as you keep it clean, because I try to keep this podcast clean, even though there are times when I want to curse like a sailor who just stubbed his toe, um, <laughs> I'll use it on the show. You can ask me a question. You can answer my question, some of my questions. You can just make a comment, anything. That would be awesome. I love doing that when y'all use that feature. If whatever app you're currently listening to me on allows you to rate either the episode or the podcast, please do that. That really does help me out a lot. If you know anybody who would like this episode or any of the episodes in this series, please share the podcast. That helps out immensely. The more people that know I exist, the more people know I exist. <laughs> That's awesome. If you can support me financially in whatever app you're listening to me on, there will either be a button that says support, support on Anchor, or in the show notes, there'll be a link that says that. You can click that and you can support me for $1, $1 $5, a month. That really does help me keep this podcast com coming to you because, you know, I have a lot of stuff going on. And yeah, I would actually like to make money specifically off the podcast because it would make it easier when I'm doing my plans to justify doing it because I love it and I love doing it. But 
I find myself contemplating sometimes whether or not I should be taking the time to do the podcast other than that, rather than doing other things. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> if, if you can support me with the podcast, that would be awesome. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm C.E. Dorset on Twitter. I'm C.E. Dorset on most social media platforms, um, but Twitter is the one I actually use the most. You can find links to the to those and everything else that I do over at projectshadow.com. That really does, you know, really would be cool to get to talk to y'all. Anywho, that's it for me today. Thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. And until next time when we talk, have the fun. Bye.